there you go. Um, so we will be loading up the recording uh, later next week after we get it processed. Uh, one of the things we'd like to make sure to do is make sure that closed captionings are there and all the necessary materials are needed. Um, so you'll be able to follow up with that on the website later on. Um, we are inviting questions to the presentation. I wanna make sure we're able to address those questions you have. So at the bottom of your screen, of your Zoom screen, uh, you will see a little Q&A button. You might need to move your mouse around a little bit in order to get it to show up down there. It'll be in the center of the screen below the slide deck presentation that we're showing. Um, you wanna click on that and you can then type in your questions. Uh, towards the end of the presentation, we will be going through those. I will read those out to staff and Theron and Alan and Kristen will be able to respond to the questions uh, that you have. So please make sure you can type those as they come to you and we'll just keep them logged up and go through it. In terms of the presentation, uh, we got a little bit over a half hour of materials to go through. Uh, they'll primarily be from Alan, who will go through the slides and talk about the project and uh, the particular details we want to go through this evening. Um, and then we've allotted a little over a half hour, almost 45 minutes or so for questions and answers. Certainly, we don't need to use all the time, but we want to make sure we're able to respond to the questions that you have. Throughout the presentation, Alan will be making reference to the city's website and to the formal survey that we've set up to collect your feedback on the project. If you don't have the flyer for tonight's meeting handy or don't have the website link available to you, we've thrown a QR code up on the screen. So feel free to use your phone to scan that and get a direct link to the website. Um, that should be the easiest way to get there. And of course, with all the fun trials and tribulations that COVID has been the last couple of years, uh, hopefully we've all gotten used to QR codes and adapting to them. Um, so that at this point, I think wraps it up for me. I'm gonna hand it over to Alan and to take us through the presentation. Alan? Thanks, uh, CJ. So the purpose of tonight's workshop is really threefold. One is to provide an overview of the alternatives. We spent quite a bit of time at public meetings number one and two going in great detail on the overall uh, project alternatives. Tonight's focus really is much more about uh, new alternatives that we've added since the uh, second public meeting on August 31st of 2021. And that's as a result of community input, we added a couple of alternatives at Bradley Ranch that we'll go over in detail tonight. In addition, we're, and we focus much of the presentation around the four questions that you'll find on the website. So if you're uh, so inclined, you could use that QR code that uh, was shown on the screen earlier or on your flyer uh, to go ahead and address those uh, questions. And I'll, I'll be going through those questions one at a time uh, during the presentation, but they're focused around uh, getting your input on signals versus roundabouts, the location of the Wilton Road intersection, and you'll note that the slide says that it's been deferred. Um, and I'll explain that more in just, just a slide or two. Um, and then the Graybill Road versus Bradley Ranch Road, and we have signal alternatives and roundabout alternatives. So that's the overall intent of the uh, tonight's workshop. Next. Just kind of a, a background. Uh, this is part of an overall 34 mile corridor that's being developed by the uh, Southeast Connector, Capital Southeast Connector JPA. This is known as segment C. It's 2.7 miles long and it's from Bond Road up to Calvine Road. Next. This slide encompasses all of the alternatives that are remaining in the study. The background slide with the line right up the middle shows the corridor from Bond Road up to Calvine. And there are six intersection locations that uh, would have either roundabouts or signals. The, the two insets, the one up in the upper left-hand corner, alternative 2C would be a realignment of Wilton Road to relocate the Wilton Road intersection. And we'll explain more about that a little later in the presentation. And then alternatives uh, or, or the inset in the lower right-hand corner are the new alternatives, alternatives 1C and 2D at Bradley Ranch Road. The thing that I'd like to uh, make sure that everyone's clear on, any alternative that starts with the number one is a signal alternative, signalized intersections. And any alternative that starts with the letter number two 
is a roundabout alternative. So hopefully we can keep that straight as we go through the presentation. You'll also notice on the main corridor there that there is a multi-use or multi-purpose trail that runs on the west side of Brantline Road throughout the entire segment. And it, it's actually part of a 34 mile long uh, multi-purpose trail once the full connector is developed. Next. So uh, just taking a step back in terms of the schedule, <clears throat> we intend to bring to the city council a, a presentation on this study. And the focus of the presentation will be to provide a broad overview of the project, all of the community input that we've received and seek city council direction on two primary factors. One is whether the corridor should have roundabouts as their signal treatment or whether they should have signals as their sig sig uh, intersection treatment from Bond Road all the way to Calvine. Secondly, we would seek direction on whether to place the intersection at Grayville or a Bradley Ranch Road. And as many of you may recall in previous presentations, the need for uh, either a Graybill or Bradley Ranch Road is not really borne by traffic demand off of Grant Line, but more out of the out of direction travel because there's a 1.6 mile distance from Sheldon Road to Calvine Road. And we felt that people were coming into the corridor having to go that distance out of direction to make a U-turn. Um, we should provide a, an intermediate intersection. So we'll go into more detail a little later in the presentation. Segment C, uh, which is this segment from Bond Road to Calvine Road is not funded in its entirety. There's a very small portion that is funded through a grant that the city received. And that would be to start the environmental studies uh, for part of this segment near the Wilton Road intersection. The reason for that being the first of the segments that might uh, be developed within this corridor is Wilton Road currently experiences the most congestion of all of the intersections uh, within the corridor. And since the environmental studies and final design would be starting later in 2022, the project team in the city has decided to not uh, make a final decision on whether they select uh, alternative 2A or 2C, uh, assuming that the roundabout alternative was to select it. And, and that would be part of this environmental work and study um, because there's a lot of inter winding uh, issues that need to be sorted out and developed. Um, the Wilton Road intersection project uh, would start with a 12 to 18 month environmental study. And then once funding was identified, then it would move into design and acquisition of right away, and then ultimately construction. But it's important to note, the only thing that's funded at this point would be the environmental study for that initial phase of the project. Next slide. Just kind of a summary of the public outreach. This is the third public meeting. We've had, we had a Zoom meeting back in uh, September of 2020 with 124 attendees. And we had a in-person meeting at the barn, no, not at the barn, at the winery, Atkins Winery uh, in, August of 2021 with about 140 attendees. So you can see that there's been a lot of participation at the public meetings and a lot of interest in the project. In addition, I've personally uh, had more than 50 meetings with uh, residential and business property owners. We've had dozens of uh, questions that have come in from the community and we've developed frequently asked questions that are on the website and we'll continue to add to those as we get additional questions and comments uh, resulting from this meeting. And then we also meet uh, every couple of months with the Sheldon Community Association. And they're a group that represents the community and uh, brings issues to us, uh, you know, that since they have a, a much greater pulse of the community, uh, having all their members live right there in the community. Next slide. So as I indicated, there are six primary intersections that will have either roundabouts or signals. 
And it's important to note that as a result of the community input, uh, intersection five will either be at Grayville Lane or at Bradley Ranch Road. And that will really be driven by the impacts to those two alternatives as well as the community input. Next slide. So now I'd, I'd like to switch to the, the survey itself. Um, and uh, I'll be presenting materials that help you evaluate and address the survey questions. Um, but certainly during Q and A, if you have additional questions, we're more than happy to address them. So the first question in the survey that you'll find on the website is which road plan alternative do you prefer? Alternative one with signalized intersections or alternative two with roundabouts? Next slide. So here's, here's an example of the Sheldon Road intersection with the left exhibit being alternative 1A with a signal and the right exhibit being alternative 2A with the roundabout. You can see that the roundabout has a slightly larger footprint in terms of overall right-of-way acquisition that would be needed, but there's a lot of operational benefits that the roundabouts provide uh, as well as safety benefits they would provide continuous flowing traffic and a much uh, significantly reduced uh, likelihood of accidents. So um, th there's a lot of trade-offs between the, the alternatives, but uh, we we thought a side-by-side -side comparison would kind of give you a sense about the footprint. Next alternative. From a typical cross-section perspective, it, this particular slide shows the cross sections for the signal alternative. The upper cross section is uh, really outside of the commercial zone from Bond Road up to um, just south of uh, Pleasant Grove School Road. And it, it has a 14 foot median in order to provide left turn pockets at each of the intersections. It also has the 10 foot multi purpose or multi-use path on the far left side of the typical cross section and uh, full 12 foot lanes, um, very consistent without the, uh, throughout the rest of the corridor for the 34 miles. The lower section is a reduced section right within the commercial zone in order to try to reduce the right-of-way impacts. You can see that we've reduced the median to seven feet in this uh, zone. And, and it would be pretty much from Pleasant Grove School Road up to Sheldon Road, with the exception of each of the intersections would need slightly wider medians than seven feet in order to accommodate those left turn pockets. And we've also reduced the multi-purpose uh, path and buffer uh, in order to reduce those impacts. It's important to note though, that this particular alternative would require the full acquisition of the Happy Garden restaurant, as well as the Wrangler bar. Uh, next slide. Now looking at the typical sections for the roundabout, the upper section is very similar in the roundabout as it was for the signal alternative with the 14 foot median. And again, that's just to have that consistent corridor look throughout the entire 34 miles. The lower section though, however, in the commercial zone, allows us to reduce the median to four feet. And with the chicaning that approaches each of the roundabouts, we were able to develop an alignment that was uh, able to avoid uh, direct impacts to the Wrangler Bar, as well as uh, Happy Garden Restaurant. And so in this alternative, there's no full acquisitions in the commercial zone. Next alternative, or next slide. Now, if, if you look at a uh, comparison of these alternatives, alternative one being signals, that's the center column, and alternative two being roundabouts, from a traffic operations perspective, roundabouts do allow us to deliver more traffic through the intersection, which will become important as, as the uh, traffic forecasts are realized uh, 20, 20 years beyond construction. From a safety perspective, uh, roundabouts have shown to have drastically reduced numbers of accidents and the severity of accidents are much reduced. And that, that's because of all the, uh, the 
cross traffic uh, interference is eliminated and the types of accidents that you might occur in a roundabout might be rear end accidents at much lower speed and occasional sideswipe, but you never have head ons like, like you can have at uh, signalized intersections. From a right of way perspective, um, the signals would be slightly superior because it's a little smaller footprint than, than the roundabouts. However, as I indicated in the typical cross sections, the signal alternative does require the full acquisition of Happy Garden Restaurant and Wrangler Bar. Uh, from a business and access uh, perspective, the roundabouts again would be viewed as superior um, U-turns would be uh, facilitated much easier at a roundabout uh, as opposed to a signalized intersection. And the cost is similar. You're trading a little bit more right-of-way cost in the roundabouts for added cost of the signal. So overall, the cost is very similar. So when you add all these up, uh, we believe that the roundabout alternatives is superior over the signal alternative. Next slide. So now we're moving to question number two. Under alternative two roundabouts, do you prefer to relocate the Wilton Road intersection to reduce impacts to the commercial zone while maintaining existing road, Wilton Road for circulation to businesses? And the choices are yes, I prefer to realign Wilton Road and relocate Wilton Road intersection, which would be voting for alternative 2C, or no, I prefer to leave the Wilton Road intersection at its current location, and that would be voting for alternative 2A. As I indicated earlier in the presentation, this ultimate decision is gonna be deferred to the environmental document phase of this first project that would be started later in 2022. However, we're still interested in understanding the community sentiment. So we have kept this question um, to, to be considered at this time. Next slide. So here's here's a side by side comparison of the of the two alternatives. And starting on the left figure, alternative two A, with the roundabout at the current location, you can see. Um, Hopefully you can see, if, if not, the exhibits are on, on the web and you can blow them up a, to a larger scale. But you can see it's a very tight fit between the two gas stations on the east side of the intersection and the shopping center and the Sheldon, Silver Sheldon Inn on the west side of the shopping center. There would be a fair amount of land that would have to be acquired from the, the gas stations. Some of the land uh, might remove their septic systems, which would be a challenge. On the west side, we know that the septic system is in the dirt lot uh, between the roadway and the parking lot. So uh, relocating that septic system for the, for the Sheldon Shopping Center could be a, a major challenge because their water source is behind the building. And additionally, the parking would all have to be consolidated because there wouldn't, need, there wouldn't be a driveway allowed within the circulatory roadway because of the uh, conflict and safety issues associated with that. So you would have one driveway upstream of the roundabout to enter into the shopping center. You'd have to combine the parking lot with uh, the Sil Silva Sheldon Inn all the way down to Happy Garden and have a, an exit out there uh, near the uh, Happy Garden Restaurant. Those property owners uh, are very much opposed to the combining of this parking lot and the circulation that would result from it. So they are not in favor of this particular alternative. And some of the gas station owners have uh, slightly different uh, considerations and may not uh, favor the other alternative. So, but as a result of the right of way impacts, we did generate alternative 2C, which realigns um, Welton Road down near Leisure Oak Lane with a small roundabout down there to provide a separation of the traffic from uh, traffic that's west, westbound to southbound Grant Line Road would go over to the new intersection located uh, downstream from the Ace Hardware Center 
and traffic that would be destined for northbound Grant Line Road would continue on the existing Wilton Road. We would probably call it Old Wilton Road. And that uh, Old Wilton Road would also provide good circulation to both gas stations and the Ace Hardware. So the circulation throughout the entire commercial zone would be uh, preserved and enhanced in many ways. And there might even be an opportunity to expand the commercial zone and, and maybe make it more of a, a walkable opportunity between businesses. Next slide. So again, con comparing alternative 2A, which is the current location to alternative 2C, from an operational standpoint, uh, 2C would be slightly superior because a lot of the friction that's occurred in the uh, commercial zone driveways would not be so close to the roundabout, but uh, very similar. Safety, since they're both roundabouts, should be fairly similar. The right-of-way impacts, um, we, we believe the right-of-way impacts would be fairly significant in 2A because not only are we uh, needing to carve out quite a bit from each of the gas stations, but the uh, lack of uh, interest or uh, support from the property owners on the west side would also create this to be an inferior alternative. And, and from a business impact perspective, alternative C preserves all of the access and all of the land that currently is uh, enjoyed by the commercial zone. Uh, so the only real downside of alternative C is the large swath of property that would run through the uh, undeveloped parcels that wrap around the ACE hardware. So overall, we believe that alternatives 2C is the superior of these two alternatives. Next slide. Now, be before we get into the questions that relate to whether you like Bradley Ranch Road or whether you like Graybill, we wanted to present the two new alternatives. So. As I indicated at community meeting number two in August of 2021, there was uh, a lot of interest and a uh, lot of comments made that maybe the alternative uh, should consider an intersection of Bradley Ranch Road in lieu of Graybill. So we have added alternative 1C, which would be a signal at Bradley Ranch Road, and that would be uh, considered in lieu of the signal that would be within alternative 1A. And then we've also added alternative 2D, which is a roundabout at Bradley Ranch Road in lieu of the roundabout that would be a gray bill that would be considered as part of 2A. So next slide, and we'll show you some pictures of, of what these look like. So here's the... Uh, Here's a comparison of the signalized intersection. Actually, it's not, not a comparison. Um, it, this is alternative 1C. This is the signal at Bradley Ranch Road. It's really shown on the right exhibit uh, with the, the, the southbound uh, left turn lane coming into Bradley Ranch Road. And the exhibit on the left, the reason for that is because under alternative 1C, Grayville becomes a right in, right out only road. And that's the purpose of that uh, exhibit on that side, where uh, Bradley Ranch Road becomes a full signalized intersection. We've also included right turn pockets for northbound um, Grant Line Road coming into, into Bradley Ranch Road. And we've uh, also got a right turn pocket into Spanish Grant Road that could also serve between Bradley Ranch Road and Grant Line Road as an acceleration lane for. Uh, vehicles coming out of Bradley Ranch Road and while they get up to speed to merge into the uh, through lane. Now, uh, well, before we leave this one, um, I also wanted to point out uh, the, the right-of-way impacts associated with the properties on the west side of uh, Bradley Ranch Road or opposite Bradley Ranch Road. We would need to consolidate and relocate their driveways um, as we've configured there because uh, it wouldn't be appropriate to have their driveway come in right into the middle of the signalized intersection. And, and so those would be the types of right-of-way impacts associated with this. And the, uh, the beige colored uh, background is the right-of-way 
that's needed for the widening as well as the, uh, the intersection conform down Bradley Ranch Road. Next slide. So alternative 2D, a roundabout at uh, Bradley Ranch Road, you can see has a, you know, a fairly uh, significantly different footprint and impact from a right-of-way perspective. The residential properties on the west side would uh, have quite a change in their um, access uh, as a result of the driveway reconfiguration to get them upstream of the roundabout rather than right in the middle of the circulatory roadway. We would also be proposing to uh, cul-de-sac Spanish Grant Road because of the close proximity of the two intersections. And uh, in order to uh, connect into Bradley Ranch Road, there's about a 25 foot or so gap in the pavement between El Arroyo and Bradley Ranch Road that would be filled in and uh, Bradley Ranch Road would be become a public road up to the roundabout from that point. Uh, again, the, the exhibit on the left side um, shows the gray bill becoming a right in, right out only street. And I can also tell you that the I've met with the property owners on the west side and uh, even some of the property owners down Bradley Ranch Road, and they're opposed to this particular location because of the right of way impacts associated with this uh, roundabout. Next slide. So <clears throat> now this is the first of the two questions uh, related to the Gray Bill Road versus Bradley Ranch Road uh, alternative. So the first question is alternative one with signals. Do you prefer a signalized intersection at Graybill Road or Bradley Ranch Road? The first choice is Graybill Road signal, uh, so you'd be selecting alternative 1A. And the second choice is the Bradley Ranch signal, you'd be selecting alternative 1C. Next. And, and here's, here's a picture of, of the choices in that particular question. So alternative 1A is a full service intersection, signalized intersection at Graybill with the associated left turn pocket from northbound uh, Grand Line Road into Graybill Lane. And uh, on the right side, alternative 1C, again, is the signalized intersection at Bradley Ranch Road with the left turn pocket uh, for southbound coming into Bradley Ranch Road. Next slide. <clears throat> Just doing a comparison of the signal alternatives, one at Great Bill and one Brad at Bradley Ranch Road. The, from an operational standpoint, we gave uh, a slight edge uh, superior to Bradley Ranch Road, primarily because of the event centers, uh, both at the winery and the uh, equestrian center. Um, from a safety perspective, the safety would be very similar. From a right, right away perspective, uh, we believe that the Bradley Ranch Road alternative is inferior because the impacts to the primarily the residential properties immediately around the intersection. But from a business impact perspective, we believe that the Bradley Ranch would uh, provide superior uh, option. Cost-wise, uh, again, probably triggered more by right-of-way costs than anything else. Uh, we gave uh, Gray Bill as the superior and so if you add all these criteria up, it, it really comes out to be kind of a toss up from a signal perspective, uh, Great Bill versus Bradley Ranch Road. Next. So the, the fourth and final question in our community service, uh, survey is under alternative two roundabouts, do you prefer a roundabout at Great Bill or Bradley Ranch Road? The Graybill Road roundabout would uh, be voting for alternative 2A. And if you prefer the Bradley Ranch Road roundabout, you'd be selecting alternative 2D. Next slide. So again, here's a comparison of your choices in question four with alternative 2A versus 2D is to the right. Um, both of the uh, roundabouts would uh, function very similar. The um, right-of-way impacts on 2A 
would be mostly uh, opposite of gray bill in the undeveloped field. Uh, the right of way impacts, as I mentioned in alternative 2D are fairly significant in the residential properties to the west, as well as the uh, first residential properties down Bradley Ranch Road. Um, next slide. Uh, looking at a, a comparison between alternative 2A and 2D, we believe from an operational standpoint that uh, Bradley Ranch Road would get a slight edge uh, over Grayville, primarily because of the service to the, uh, the businesses down Bradley Ranch Road. From a safety perspective, it would be very similar. Uh, from a right-of-way perspective, though, because of the impacts to the residential properties, uh, Grayville would be significantly superior over the Bradley Ranch alternative. From a business impact perspective, again, the access to the uh, equestrian center and, and the uh, winery uh, would be superior on Bradley Ranch Road. And the cost, again, associated with uh, right-of-way impacts would give a superior nod to the Grayville location. So if you add all these criteria up, we believe that the roundabout at Grayville provides a, a superior overall alternative to the community. Next slide. So what are, what are the next steps? Um, we're going to incorporate the community input, uh, both from this meeting and the previous meetings and the survey results. We'll bring the, uh, an informational item to the city council at one of their meetings in May of 2022 Again, seeking direction on the type of intersection, whether it be roundabouts or signals throughout the entire corridor. We'll be seeking direction on whether we locate the intermediate intersection at Grayville or Bradley Ranch Road. And then our plan is to finalize the uh, precise roadway plan and visioning study by June of 2022, at which time the city will begin preparing an RFP for the environmental document and uh, preliminary design for the initial phase project that we described earlier near Wilton Road. And <clears throat> we would expect that that, would, uh, that process would conclude around the end of 2022. Next slide. So CJ, or am I handing this back to you? Yes, Alan, thank you so much for right. that. Um, so we have a number of questions already queued up. There's about 16 uh, or a little under 16 or so in total. Um, I've been watching them as we've been going through. And I think um, I'm going to pitch these to you or Theron or Kristen. Um, I think let's start maybe a little bit more globally, and then we can work on zooming down into uh, the particular um, Graybill Bradley intersection issues. Um, so bear with me a little bit as I jump up and down this list a little bit. Um, first question we have, and I think this is a pretty global one to start off with, is around roundabouts. Um, is there any initial, is there any documentation, is there any um, information you can provide about why uh, or how roundabouts are safer or maybe not safer than a signalized intersection, uh, particularly for pedestrian traffic? Um, part of this question notes that um, in a prior meeting, um, members of the public were notified that pedestrians have to wait for breaks in the traffic to cross at a roundabout. Um, so you sort of end up playing chicken a little bit, getting across the street. So maybe Alan, uh, you guys could talk about that first and we can go down the list from there. Okay, so um, let, let's start out with uh, just the, the generalized safety at a roundabout. At a, at a signalized intersection, there are 16 conflict points between uh, various turning traffic and other turning traffic or, or through traffic within the intersection. Those 16 uh, conflict points are eliminated in a roundabout. And, and uh, the speeds also, uh, we, we would expect that the speeds, on a, if we had all signals running through here, will remain at uh, 45 miles an hour and, and likely uh, will operate even higher than that. Um, if we were to implement the roundabout alternative throughout the entire corridor, uh, it requires vehicles to slow to between 20 and 25 miles an hour to negotiate the roundabout 
and we would expect that the corridor itself would operate no higher than 35 miles an hour. So from a, a speed and safety perspective, the roundabouts are far superior. Now, integrating the question into uh, pedestrians, we know that at a signalized intersection, pedestrians can cross one side of the intersection when the light is red. Um, it's, uh, sometimes for a, a real widely divided uh, roadway, which this is not the case, you might have pedestrian refuge halfway across the intersection, but I wouldn't expect that to be the case here. So for a, a given walk cycle, you would be able to cross the entire width of Grant Line Road or uh, north-south on any of the intersecting roadways. Uh, from a roundabout perspective, uh, roundabouts are designed to cross one side of the roundabout or one side of the road at a time. And there is refuge in the, the splitter islands in the approach to the roundabout. So pedestrians would cross a northbound Grand Line Road traffic first and, and be in the refuge in the median of the splitter island. And then when it's safe to cross the southbound traffic, they would do so. Um, there's generally gaps that uh, occur. You, so you can see these splitter islands and, and the sidewalks or the crosswalks that uh, cross into that splitter island. And there's refuge there in, in, the, in the middle of each of these movements. So in this particular case, you would cross three, three uh, travel patterns to go from the east side over to the west side. And uh, there would be two refuges uh, to, to get across. So each of those are much easier to cross uh, with smaller gaps than, than it would be for uh, somebody trying to cross a, a full four lane roadway. If, if I could add here, um, there's been numerous studies across the nation and frankly across the world about the safety benefits of roundabouts versus uh, signalized intersections. And I'm sure we could post some of that information on our website uh, that has the studies. But imagine yourself uh, at a traffic signal and someone runs that red light, high speed. You have a T-bone intersection with a high severity, high speed accident with injuries typically involved. In a roundabout, slower speeds, as Alan mentioned, side swipe or, or slow speed right angle intersection uh, collisions. So that's it in a nutshell. Great, thanks guys. Um, I'm just looking at some of the other questions around here about roundabouts and the speed. I think you mentioned this from the design speed difference between a signalized intersection where the corridor is signal versus is a roundabout. Maybe you could highlight that a little bit more and what these are designed for uh, and how those how that speed gets controlled for. Okay, it, it, it's important to note that uh, most of the entire 34 mile corridor is being designed for 45 mile an hour traffic. Um, however, the, this particular segment in, in Sheldon is unique in, in the overall corridor because of the commercial zone and the, um, the proximity of the commercial buildings and driveways. So we believe that it's uh, very important to slow the traffic down. Unfortunately, when you have a signalized intersection on a very tangential straight roadway, it's very difficult to slow down the traffic uh, without maximum enforcement. And, and so we would expect that the speeds in the signal alternative would be uh, at least 45 and probably uh, upwards of, of above 50. Whereas the uh, speed limit would be set for 35 miles an hour in the roundabout alternative. And the uh, vehicles would have to negotiate the roundabouts at between 20 and 25. So between the roundabouts, they would accelerate up to that 35 and then they decelerate again at the next roundabout to negotiate it at 20 to 25. And then, you know, they continuously move uh, through the corridor as compared to having to stop and start at signals. And maybe you can speak a little bit about why this particular section or the C corridor is being considered for either roundabouts or signals, whereas a lot of the rest of the Capital Southeast Connector project is being focused on as signal intersections. It, it, again, it, it's the uniqueness of this particular corridor with the commercial zone, especially 
uh, with all of the closely spaced commercial properties, the multiple driveways, um, you know, long, long term, you know, there, there would be a desire to have maybe more of a little bit of a pedestrian friendly environment to walk between the businesses. Um, we, we have not only provided in this design, the walkway that's uh, on or the multi-purpose path that's continuous uh, down the west side of the segment. But within the commercial zone, we have a pedestrian path on the east side as well, connecting each of the businesses. So <clears throat> it's, it's really a, a very unique uh, situation. And, and that's why the JPA uh, recognized that it needed some special considerations with reduced cross sections, with slower speeds, and reduced design uh, standards as compared to the rest of the corridor. Okay, I think last one um, on looking at these, uh, where to go? Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about the acquisition process, particularly the differences between a signalized intersection and a roundabout intersection. There's a couple of questions in here on what does that mean in terms of the acquisition, full acquisition versus a partial, and what does that process look like? Okay, so, uh, the signal alternative 1A, I mentioned uh, two properties that would require full acquisition, and that was the Happy Garden Restaurant and the Wrangler Bar. Um, the roundabout alternative to, uh, 2A uh, would not require acquisition of those two properties. Um, if, if 2C is considered, there would be a fairly significant right-of-way acquisition through a couple of undeveloped parcels that wrap around uh, the ACE hardware. But again, that could be a partial acquisition depending on that landowner. Uh, they may desire to retain the uh, remainders that would be on both sides of the realigned Wilton Road in order to develop those into additional commercial zone. Um, but that would be their choice uh, during the negotiations with the city. All, the, all of the rest of the property are all, if, if there is a right-of-way impact, it's all a partial acquisition. Slivers off the front of uh, the, the frontage of the roadway um, with some temporary construction easements uh, that uh, go back into their driveway to make driveway conforms or to regrade uh, some of the drainage ditches we, we have looked at and are evaluating uh, the drainage throughout the whole corridor, because we know that this is a relatively flat area and uh, there are several areas that don't drain very well. So we, we have provided room in, in the cross section for drainage ditches along the corridor. And within the commercial zone, there would be an uh, underground uh, piped drainage system in order to reduce the overall right-of-way impacts. And all, all of that would come out, in fact, you can see on the right exhibit, on the left side of the right exhibit, you can see a kind of a rectangular area, which would be a detention basin that would be needed for the uh, commercial zone drainage system. If I could talk, if the question was about what is the right of way process, maybe I could just spend a minute on that. So first thing is we have to have an improved environmental document selecting a preferred alternative. And the general tenant is the least impact with the greatest public good. So once the design is, is approved, then we prepare plant and legal descriptions. And then the property owner will have a certified appraiser go out. And this isn't a, an appraiser that you get for your home loan re refi. These are certified appraisers. And they walk with the property owner. They they come up with what, what are the impacts associated with the project. And then an offer is made uh, on, and looking at competitive um, similar properties within the corridor, real time pros, uh, costs for property. And, and the idea is that you are uh, given um, an offer that is, if you were in the market now with that right away uh, for sale. If we don't reach an agreement, on that, you have the right to hire your own appraiser and the city has to pay up to $5,000 reimbursement for that appraisal. We'll look at those two appraisals, see if there's any differences that we missed. 
And then uh, there's also administrative um, um, settlement that can be reached. If at the end, if we don't reach agreement, then what's called a resolution of necessity is taken to city council. The city council uh, is will weigh in to say, again, if this is the least public impact with the greatest public benefit. The property owner is invited to testify at that hearing. If the city council approves that resolution necessity, then ultimately a court of law will decide what the, the right of way is necessary for the public good and the compensation is uh, appropriate. And, and, and just, just to clarify in terms of the schedule and where we are on this particular project, um, as I indicated, the very first project that would head towards construction would be the one near Wilton Road. And, and the first phase of that would be the environmental document and further design refinement. So we're several years away from uh, any consideration right away for that area. And if you go north and south from there, it's many more years away. Yes. Yep. So. Thanks, Al. That's actually a question we have is about the environmental document for Wilton Road. Um, it speaks to the slide that we have speaks to an RFP or request for proposal being released later this calendar year towards the end of this calendar year. Um, so that review wouldn't start until 2023. Um, so it sounds like it's many years out before that intersection or that area is ready for improvement. That, that's correct. And in, in, in addition to the time to process those steps, the, the environmental document taking maybe 12 to 18 months and then final design uh, concurrent with right away occurring over maybe 18 to 24 months uh, and then finally construction starting. But in order to progress through those steps, the city has to identify and secure funding for each of those steps, which they do not have at this time. So there could be lags between each of those steps as well. Okay, so let's go back up to the top of the questions that we've got, and I'm just going to run through this in the order that we've received them. Uh, so the first question we have is regarding the alternatives around Graybill and um, Bradley Ranch. All the alternatives show the addition of a private driveway onto Bitzel Road from the northern line abutting Grant Line. There's currently a house on that lot in this location. Is there an alternative to extend a term pocket? This is planned to relocation of intersection to Bradley Ranch Road. Maybe is there an exhibit or a slide, I think? Alan, we can um, yeah, here. if you go to the... Uh... Let's see. Get this one. Nope, that's not it. At, uh, uh, no, if you go if you go to the gray bill, you go go a couple of slides uh, further out. Twenty. There we go. Yeah. So I, I I think the question is about connection between gray bill and and Beitzel Road. So Beitzel Bi Road is currently a private road serving just a couple of properties, um, and and so there there really wasn't. Uh, uh, adequate demand to connect Beitzel Road into Graybill Road, but that certainly could be if, if this, uh, I believe there's a 40 or 80 acre parcel there opposite Graybill uh, Lane. If it was ever developed into further residential property, there certainly could be consideration of a fourth leg to that intersection, um, either going directly into development and or connecting Beitzel Road uh, into Graybill. I'll just point out that side of the road is in the county too. Correct. Uh, the next question we have um, is again, Graybill or Bradley. Um, Bradley, in the question, they note that Bradley has much more traffic than any other roads in the immediate area from Grant Line. Um, there's also homes in that area and the established commercial farm and the equestrian center, which all have daily traffic and there's the events that occur. Um, so besides traffic volume, is there also a need for the equipment and vehicles to, so besides the volume, there's also a need for the equipment and the vehicles to easily a, a, excuse me, access Bradley Ranch Road off of Grant Line. Um, so they're concerned that it may not be optimum or it is an optimum for large uh, vehicles, particularly those with horse trailers and large trucks to navigate the roundabout. Um, many of these trailers are similar in size to semi-trailers. Um, so certainly while there's fewer homes and fewer uses along Graybill, Maybe there's more need for something over at Bradley. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit, Alan. Okay, so uh, 
so, several things were woven into that particular question. Uh, I know that there's a concern about the very large uh, equestrian trailers, uh, especially the, the eight horse trailers. We, we have laid out uh, the turn templates that are required to negotiate the, those larger uh, horse trailers through the intersections, both in terms of uh, signalized intersections as well as uh, roundabouts. And uh, in, in the future, we're actually working on um, a simulation that will show a video of those uh, trailers running through uh, the corridor, but it's not quite ready for viewing yet. Um, but the, uh, the, there are several additional businesses that an intersection would serve at Bradley Ranch Road. And, and again, the reason why Grayville was looked at first was it was the belief of the city and the team that the right-of-way impacts were far less to uh, place the, the intersection at Grayville. We can, we can definitely see some advantages in terms of access to the businesses but if, uh, you know, for example, if, if you turn to um, slide 26 or so that has the roundabouts, yeah, there you go. Um, you, you, you can see that if, if you had, um, you know, north, northbound traffic uh, that wants to make a right turn onto Bradley Ranch Road under alternative 2A would not have any difficulty doing that. Southbound traffic would have to make a U-turn at Grayville and come back to Bradley Ranch Road. It's a distance of about a thousand feet. So it's not very far out of direction. The roundabout is designed for U-turns with uh, large agricultural vehicles or horse trailers. Uh, we also would anticipate that the horse trailers would, uh, especially those that are going to the event uh, center there would route themselves uh, so as to not require U-turns. So they would come up from the, the south, um, you know, and make a right turn into Bradley Ranch Road. And when they exit, they would they would head north and, and either turn across Calvine Road or or head out back out Jackson Highway. Um, so that you know, there is routings and uh, education that could accompany uh, either alternative uh, that would more than accommodate the traffic that goes into Bradley Ranch Road. Our next question, what happens to the residents that live off of Sheldon Woods Road? I think going back a slide or two might be helpful here, right? Let's see, yeah, I don't, Sheldon Woods Road. Um, I don't think we quite have a graphic, but I think that's a little bit further down. I think it's actually in between two intersections and I don't know that. Yeah, I'm trying to think which. It would which... just be, I think underneath, uh, I think it's about in here, if I remember correctly. Sh Sheldon Woods is north of Sheldon, right? No, just south, just south of Sheldon. I think it's south. Of, if I remember okay. Correctly, south All right. Of so, so yeah. Sheldon Woods Road is proposed to be a right hand, right in, right out only intersection, um, and it's uh, it's located just a little north of Sheldon Road, uh, probably about a thousand feet or so. Um, so. Uh, under if if the uh, traffic that wanted to get to Sheldon Woods was heading southbound on Grand Line Road, they would go down the Sheldon Road and flip a U-turn and and travel about a thousand feet or so. Let's see, it's Station Five Ninety Five to Station Five Eighty Three, so twelve twelve hundred feet. Um, they could flip a U-turn and and be back to Sheldon Woods. Okay. Uh, next question actually is back on the signal versus roundabouts. To clarify, if the signal alternative is chosen, the Wrangler Bar and Happy Garden Restaurant properties would require full acquisition. I think we had a correct. Slide yes. On that. So yes. That's that, 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 that is correct. Okay. Uh, next up, how many, uh, this is a question about accidents or um, collisions that occur. Do we have that data, particularly for Grant Line and Willard? Grand, Grand Line and Wilton. Uh, the question is about Willard. Willard. I so, may so have meant, uh, obviously, I wonder, I may have meant Wilton in that case. Yeah. Yes, well, he does. In, I'm seeing in, a note in, here below. Yes. In, in either case, we, we don't have the current accident data that uh, exists today. 
Okay. Next question, will we be able to make a left onto Grant line coming off of Sheldon Woods? I think we answered that one in your description there. Um, okay, so the next question is about property owner outreach. Do you intend to meet with the uh, Bitzel Road owner? Or Bitzel Road, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we, you know, we're more than happy to, to meet with uh, any of the owners that want to talk specifically about their situation. Okay. So pro and probably the best way to accommodate that would be to put your contact information in the Q&A box. Okay. I also put uh, Theron's contact information, his email up on this page. So if anybody wants to reach out to the team, uh, particularly property owners, and talk about potential impacts, please reach out to Theron to discuss. Okay. Uh, next question up, have you determined the length it takes for a truck and trailer to make a right hand turn, a left bearing within, I believe that means to say within the roundabout. And what is the length for a truck and trailer to get up to speed? And there's some concern, I'm looking down at her question a little bit later. Um, there's some concern, particularly the Sheldon roundabout that exists today um, about needing to essentially gun it in order to get up to speed to get through and out of the roundabouts and concern about safety. Well, uh, keep, keep in mind that all of the traffic that uh, comes up to and negotiates these roundabouts has to be down at 20 to 25 miles an hour. So the gap that's necessary to merge in that slower stream of traffic is much smaller than it would be if the traffic's traveling at 50 miles an hour. Um, so, the, you know, all of the vehicles that uh, approach a roundabout have to decelerate to negotiate the roundabout, and they naturally accelerate coming out of the roundabout, and, and all vehicles are faced with that uh, deceleration on the approach and the acceleration on the exit. If I could add, um, if you have a large vehicle, you shouldn't be entering the roundabout and have to gun it. You should wait till there's an adequate gap in traffic and move in at a safe speed. Okay. And um, it, you know, if, if somebody wanted to specifically look at a particular vehicle, we could show them what the turning radius would be based on that particular vehicle. Okay. And they can follow up with you, Theron, to, to schedule that time and talk about yes. that. Yes. Certainly. All right, let me get these cleared up. Um, next question, if a roundabout becomes the selected option at one of these intersections, um, well, we talked about this with the acquisition process and compensation to disfinish the usability of the site. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that one out. Um, next question, why do we need six roundabouts in a three mile stretch of road? There's, we seem set on the roundabouts, uh, so drivers won't have to go far to do turnarounds. Um, why don't we put these in other locations of the city, particularly between 99 and Bond along Grant Line? So within this uh, stretch, we have major intersections at Bond Road, Wilton Road, Sheldon Road, and Calvine Road, all of which need uh, full access intersections because of the heavy demand uh, east and west from Grand Line. So roundabouts and or signals are definitely needed at those intersections. The uh, 2012 JPA uh, programmatic EIR that was completed for the entire corridor also recognized that there was a need for a signalized intersection at Aliani. And uh, so we've continued uh, based on that programmatic ER to consider a full service intersection at Aliani, uh, primarily to serve the commercial corridor there, the, um, the existing shopping centers on both sides, as well as uh, future anticipated uh, commercial development uh, would be well served with those particular intersections. So that, that gives us the five intersections in this segment C. And then as I indicated in the presentation, we added a sixth intersection because of the anticipated out of direction travel that would be needed in the 1.6 mile distance from Sheldon Road to Calvine Road. And we, we felt that that was 
too far out of direction for people to have to travel to, to go up and make a U-turn. And so we placed uh, either a Grayville or Bradley Ranch Road, which are fairly close to the midpoint in that 1.6 mile stretch. Um, I'm going to jump down here a little bit. So this question is regarding the survey questions number three and four, which talk about under uh, the alternatives of um, either a signalized intersection at Graybill or Bradley or a roundabout at Graybill and Bradley. Could there be an option of none of the above or neither in either of these questions? Well, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, you could uh, you could not answer one of the questions if you don't if you don't want to signal at either location, and you you prefer roundabouts at uh, one or the one or the other locations, then you could just not answer question three. If and I'm not I'm not clear on what the question is. Maybe I think they might be asking if we just didn't put an intersection treatment there and we left. The one oh, there. okay, okay, okay. So. I mean, I, I guess that that's an option. And in fact, you know, if, if the community was really torn between the two locations and didn't really find value in either location, we could get direction from city council that, uh, you know, that maybe we don't need the extra intermediate intersection. But we do believe that the residents and businesses that are coming off of the side streets between Sheldon Road and Calvine would benefit by having this intermediate intersection in order to reduce the out of direction travel. Um, and, and that was the reason why it was placed. I'll just add that there is a comment section on the website so you can articulate a little more clearly what, what your, your comment is. And finally, it sparks in my mind with the environmental document, there's always the alternative called the no build alternative, which will look at what are the environmental impacts long term if we don't do a project? Yeah, but I, 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 we, we have to recognize that uh, there is a programmatic EIR that has identified Grand Line Road as the connector uh, corridor. And, and so the, there, there is a need to do a project. The question is, how do we size and shape the project to, to meet the needs of the regional travel, but also meet the needs of the community? And, that, and that, that's, that's what we've tried to do in this study. Agreed. And I'm, all I'm saying is the no build analysis will show that impact. Right, right. But it's, it, it, it probably wouldn't be able to be selected at this time. Likely not. Right. Uh, let's see, next question that we have is uh, specific to an intersection. So how would a resident on Wilton Road get to Pleasant Grove School Road in the Wilton Road realignment option? So let me go ahead and bring that slide up. Okay. And Alan, maybe you can talk about that. Yeah, so, so they'd be westbound on Wilton Road. They would make a left turn at the roundabout located at, at Leisure Oak Lane and go across the realigned Wilton Road alignment and then make a right turn. Oh, I, I see what they're saying. Actually, I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna back up. So uh, starting back on westbound Wilton Road, they would go through the roundabout at Leisure, Leisure Oak Lane. They would go up and make a right turn onto Grant Line Road up to Aliani, which is 1500 feet away and make a U-turn and then come back down to uh, Pleasant Grove School Road. Okay. Now, one of, one of, one of the benefits that I, that I wanna point out um, with, with alternative 2C for people that are coming out of Pleasant Grove School Road, you really only have to travel, I don't know, five or 600 feet to the south to get to a roundabout, which gives you full access in all directions. And, and as compared to uh, alternative 2A, if you're coming out of Pleasant Grove School Road, you have to go all the way down to Bond to flip a U-turn and come back. And so there, that's another benefit to alternative 2C for uh, vehicles that are going to and from Pleasant Grove School Road. 
Uh, next question we have is regarding other infrastructure. So is there going to be a sewer system with, with the road work? And if so, are people uh, connected to Grantline Road able to connect to that system? I think that's probably a better answer by the city. Well, I can say that there's no plans by the city to extend either water or sewer service to this area. It's meant to be rural and um, beyond private well and septic systems. Um, so um, maybe you can talk about the storm drain system in lieu, which would be the, uh, something that would be a captured in here, correct? Right, but the, the only storm drain system that we're envisioning would be uh, within the commercial corridor. And, and the reason for that is because we don't have room in the cross section for drainage ditches in addition to the lane widening. So we would have uh, drainage inlets that would go to an underground pipe system and capture that uh, runoff that would occur both on the properties as well as the street and run it down to that detention basin that was located adjacent to the realigned Wilton Road. Um, all of the rest of the drainage throughout the corridor would continue to be conveyed in dr roadside drainage ditches, but they would be reconfigured and resized to accommodate the, the anticipated runoff. Okay. Uh, next question, why can't we have a combination of some lights and some roundabouts between Bond and Calvine? Good, good question. So as, as most of you know, as you drive a corridor with all signals, there's an opportunity to time the signal so that you can get the platoons that arrive from one signal to the next efficiently through the corridor. So there's an advantage to have all signals in such a time system. If you introduce a roundabout, now all of a sudden you have random arrivals rather than these platoons and you lose some of the efficiency of a signalized intersection. Similar, if you um, introduce a signal in the middle of a roundabout corridor, then all of a sudden you have large platoons arriving at your roundabout, which uh, reduces the effectiveness of the roundabout because they would have to wait uh, their opportunity uh, to enter into the roundabout. So, from, from an operational standpoint, it's uh, far superior in this corridor, both in terms of operations as well as safety and, and speed to have either all signals or all roundabouts. Okay. Um, let's see, next question is about Mooney Road. Is that a right turn only? Yeah, it's a right, right in and right out only. Okay. And it, um, it's, it's, it's immediately uh, south of Sheldon Road. So mm -hmm. coming, out of, coming out of Mooney Road, you'd have the ability to make a U-turn at Sheldon Road, whether it be a signal or, or a roundabout. Okay. Um, let's see, next question we have, isn't there a way to realign the new Wilton Road option closer to the ACE hardware and then incorporate Pleasant Grove School Road into it? Hmm. So I'm gonna jump over to that slide and maybe Alan, you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we, it, when we first laid this out, we, we did look at that. Um, and, and the concern that we had was either you have to go through the ACE hardware to perfectly align or you have to go through a couple of residential properties on the west side uh, to realign Pleasant Grove School Road into the realigned Wilton Road. Ni neither of which, uh, you know, were considered viable from uh, a community impact perspective. Okay. Um, we have a couple of notes in here from uh, property owners identifying desire to uh, connect with you. Um, so I've noted those down. Um, so we've got those, let's see, what else do we have? And then there's a couple of other, these are more comments. I'll go ahead and read them so everyone has the benefit. Um, one person noting that there's the commercial farm at the end of Bradley Ranch that's been there for generations. So thank you for that comment. Um, another comment about roundabouts being far more evasive or invasive to property owners. Um, I think several of the diagrams bear that out. So thank you for that comment. 
Um, one comment notes that many of the roads are end at Grant Line or terminate into Grant Line, so there's no cross traffic to worry about running a red light uh, because of the offsets, excuse me, many of these uh, intersections have uh, from one side of Grant Line to the other. So thank you for that comment. Um, let's see. Um, uh, and someone else notes as a follow-up, also a roundabout may not be the preferred option at either Bradley or, um, or Graybill. Um, so certainly that's a possibility with the way the survey is set up to provide those uh, thoughts and comments. Um, another comment about the safety of roundabouts, that there is um, not a safe distance to enter because traffic is moving quickly or fast through a roundabout. There's no way to slow the traffic down coming into it. Um, I've seen a couple of, of references in these questions today regarding the Sheldon and um, uh, Bradshire, the Sheldon and um, Waterman roundabouts as reference points to that. Um, it's maybe something we want to follow up on a little bit more. I, I, I can say that, uh, that we have introduced what we call chicaning, which is the curvilinear approach to the roundabouts. And that chicaning is intended to uh, cause the vehicles to slow from, you know, 35 miles an hour down to that 20 to 25, so that they're entering the roundabout uh, all at, at about the same speed. And Alan, is that a design feature that does exist or does not exist at the other roundabouts? Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm not certain since I didn't design those. Kristen or Theron, do you recall? I don't, I don't myself. I haven't been out there in a couple of months. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we can address that separately with the okay. follow-up. Um, here's a question about adding speed bumps before the roundabouts to help really get people to slow down. Is that an option? Well, we, we hope through good geometrics and chicaning that we can cause the reduction of speed that we're desiring because we, we want vehicles to enter and negotiate the roundabout all at a, a very consistent speed, regardless of which approach you're coming in on. Um, so we hope that we don't need speed bumps. Okay. Um, I pulled up the aerial real quick for Sheldon and Waterman. It appears there's a little bit of chicaning as you're coming southbound on Waterman, uh, but none to really to speak of along Sheldon um, in either direction. Okay. Um, I can't see, unfortunately, the aerial I'm looking at for the Bradshaw intersection um, doesn't have the completed project in it. So unless, Kristen, you can recall. Um, yeah, my, I drive through there quite often. I've never looked for that specifically, but I don't feel like it was to the extent we have here. Yeah. We'd have to verify that, though. Well, we, yeah, I, I mean, maybe there's an opportunity to look at uh, how that's operating uh, to see if uh, it, there, there's a couple of considerations in roundabout design. You don't want what we call path overlap, which is where they basically, if it's a multi-lane roundabout, they they use both lanes to negotiate the, the through movement. And, and that's what may be occurring. So you, the city might need to look at that and uh, identify whether they're negotiating the roundabout at too fast a speed and some minor adjustments could be made to the roundabout to effectively reduce that. Okay. I was going to mention just related to the speed bumps too, you know, speed bumps aren't typically put in when you're at a higher speed. You normally right. find those more in residential areas where the speed is already reduced below that 25 mile per hour right. or at that 25 mile per hour. Um, so a question, and we may not be able to answer this one, uh, but about if roundabouts are such a good idea, how come there are no roundabouts on Highway 50 in Placerville? This area will become very similar to that. I think I'd like to make a comment. So there's been a change at Caltrans over the last three or four years where if you're proposing a project, the default intersection control is, is a roundabout and you have to go through what's called an intersection control evaluation and justify why a roundabout is not appropriate. So it's an evolving, you know, roundabouts have been in Europe for many years, 
and America is just now getting on board. But the default at Caltrans is, is to look at roundabouts first. So I don't know how long that intersection at 50 and Placerville has been there, but it's been at least a decade. Oh, it's been several decades. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had one other comment about the safety of the Sheldon intersection, uh, the Sheldon roundabout. So I think, uh, or both of them anyway, um, this particular comment's noting that they almost had a collision today uh, with another vehicle that was not slowing or yielding before entering. So perhaps Theron and Kristen, that's something we should go back and, um, and look at a little bit more to understand operationally what's happening there. Um, okay. So um, I, the only other two questions or items that are open on my screen our two property owner requests for check-in. So I have those. Um, there was one follow-up, uh, which I believe was about the driveway at, um, at Bitzel. There is a driveway addition. I'm still trying to understand the difference here. Maybe Austin, if you had a clarification of the question, you could type so, in. So, so maybe his question is that on the left-hand exhibit there, we, we added a driveway off of Bessel Road that uh, services the, the property. Ah, there yeah. we go. And, and the reason why is because the, the original uh, driveway would have been very close to this intersection. And, and so from an operational and safety perspective, we wanted to relocate that uh, off to the side. Perfect. Thanks for figuring that out. Um, I think the graphics that are up on the website, certainly at a larger scale, and they're not as clipped as these are. So... I um, certainly encourage folks to look at those as you're reviewing and filling out that survey question. Um, um, CJ, I also wanted to mention that we do have a project that will be completed um, with, when the weather warms up a bit in the evenings um, at the Sheldon Bradshaw uh, roundabout that will include some restriping. So, um, you know, it's not reconfiguring the roadway itself, but um, there will be some, some work going on there and you may see some improvements from that. Great, thanks. Chris. So again, if there are any questions, uh, hopefully we got through everybody's and I didn't butcher anything too badly. Um, but if you have any other questions, now is the time to get them into the Q&A, again, at the bottom of your screen. Um, while everybody's taking a second look at that, I'll go ahead and pull this slide up. Again, if you have questions after tonight, please reach out to Theron. His email is up on the screen as well as contact information up on the website. You can use that QR code that's in the lower right corner of the screen to pull up the site, to get you direct access to that, uh, at least on your phone. And on that page is the survey where you can fill out your preferences for the alternatives uh, for the different intersections and the project as a whole. Um, you can also search for the project off of the city's website by looking up the Grant Line Road study the Grant Line Road Precise Plan. Um, you should also have the invitation for the tonight's workshop, which also has the website address and the same QR code. Um, but if you don't have that, feel free to take a picture of tonight or use your phone to get there this evening uh, and maybe bookmark that and keep an eye out for it. Um, so I'm not seeing any additional questions pop up in the line. So Alan or Theron or Kristen, are there any other notes we can leave folks this evening? Or no, I just I just like to uh, thank thank all the attendees for taking time out of their busy schedules to join us. We really much appreciate the community feedback and and the engagement that we constantly see uh, you know, along this corridor because we really we really want to develop the best facility for the community. Great. Yes. Thanks everybody for joining this thank evening. Thank you. We do appreciate it. Um, and again, feel free to, to fill out that survey, let your friends and neighbors know, looking for all that feedback to come in. Um, so otherwise, have a great rest of the evening. Thanks again, and we will see you in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.